Hello there and welcome to Level Update. Late Powell's story continues to draw attention across the Southwest. As of October 19, 2025, the lake sits at an elevation of 3545.59 feet, standing 154 feet below full pool. Despite this deficit, the tone around Powell is one of cautious stability. After months of steady decline earlier in the year, the reservoir has found a temporary balance, one that reflects improved inflows and controlled releases from Glen Canyon Dam. When we look at the numbers closely, the trend tells an interesting story. Since early October, Lake Powell's level has shown a gradual but consistent rise of more than a foot and a half from its lowest point. That upward trend is directly connected to inflows from the upper Colorado Basin, where heavy rain events and runoff from Colorado's late-season floods helped push the inflow for the current water year to 371,526 acre-feet, about 106% of the seasonal average. These inflows have exceeded total outflows by roughly 74,000 acre-feet, giving the lake a rare short-term surplus. This shift follows a period of long decline seen over the past year. The long chart shows how Powell slipped through late 2024 and the first half of 2025, bottoming out just above 3543 feet in early October. However, the Colorado floods changed that trajectory, delivering a welcome boost in late summer. As of now, Lake Powell is 1.56 feet above its lowest level for the year, marking a phase of stability rather than recovery. What's notable about this moment is not just the rise itself, but the fact that it has held steady for more than a week. Daily readings show the elevation fluctuating within just a few tenths of a foot, which is a clear sign that inflows and outflows have reached a near equilibrium. The Glen Canyon Dam's releases remain conservative, at about 296,700 acre-feet for the new water year, far below the usual minimum thresholds. That operational decision has helped sustain the lake's surface height and may continue to do so through early winter. Another key detail in the data is the total precipitation, which sits at 210% of the seasonal average, far outpacing the snowpack, which is still lagging at 41% of normal. This means most of the recent inflow has come from rainfall and short-term runoff, rather than snowmelt. It's a unique hydrological situation, one that's maintaining Powell's level now, but may not guarantee long-term gains once the winter snow season begins. When viewed in the broader context of the Colorado River Basin, Powell's current position offers both relief and warning. Relief because the reservoir avoided falling further during a historically difficult summer, and warning because the total storage is still only 28% of its full capacity, around 6.8 million acre-feet of water compared to a full pool of over 24 million. The Upper Basin's 34 tracked reservoirs are currently at around 70% capacity, which is supportive but not enough to fuel a sustained recovery without future inflow events. For the Glen Canyon Dam's operations team, this period of stability is crucial. The dam's controlled releases into Lake Mead are being kept minimal, barely 4% of the yearly requirement, allowing the system to retain as much water as possible before the colder months. If the inflows continue to outpace outflows through November, Powell could hold above 3545 feet and even edge upward slightly, possibly crossing 3546 feet before winter. However, this short-term rise should not be mistaken for a large-scale rebound. The data clearly show that Lake Powell is still over 150 feet below its full pool elevation of 3,700 feet, and while its current level is higher than its recent low, it remains down by 31 feet compared to this time last year. The recent stability is more a pause in decline than a sign of sustained recovery. Still, for many observers and communities that rely on Lake Powell for power generation and recreation, stability itself is good news.
It means marina operations remain functional, boat ramps are accessible, and hydropower generation continues with less risk of interruption. At a water elevation of over 35-45 feet, the dam's turbines can operate safely and efficiently, keeping electricity flowing to millions across the southwest. Over the next few weeks, all eyes will remain on inflow reports from Colorado and Utah, with total inflows running at 181% of last year's rate, the basin has a chance to maintain this balance longer than expected. The critical factor will be how much of that runoff can continue feeding into Powell before the seasonal slowdown in November. Looking ahead, if outflows stay limited and occasional storm events add new inflow pulses, Lake Powell may hold this level into early 2026. That scenario would mark a significant change from the pattern of yearly losses seen since 2020, suggesting that the lake may finally be finding a short-term equilibrium point after years of turbulence. In conclusion, Lake Powell's current condition paints a mixed but encouraging picture. The rise caused by the Colorado floods gave the system much-needed breathing room, and careful management has preserved those gains. The waterline, now hovering around 35, 45 and a half feet, symbolizes a fragile but real stability. It's not a comeback story yet, but it is a pause in the decline, and for the Colorado River system, that's a meaningful step forward. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more in depth updates and analysis on Lake Powell, Lake Mead, and the entire Colorado River system.